Go watch part one if you haven't already. Layer three, IMO gold medalist. Proofs. A mathematical proof is a logical argument that shows a statement is always true using previously established facts like axioms, definitions, and theorems. Terence Tao is the current goat of mathematics. With an estimated IQ of like a bajillion or something, he started university level maths at age seven and he published his first research paper at age nine. Of course, that's nothing compared to the average YouTube commenter who is five years old and studying for his PhD. Polynomials. This is a polynomial. Not really much to say. <laughs> induction. Mathematical induction states that if a statement is true for a condition n equals 1, and if that statement being true for n implies it must also be true for n plus 1, then the statement is true for all cases of n where n is a natural number. Dirichlet's principle states if you have more items than containers, then at least one container must hold more than one item obviously. Homothety, not to be confused with homopathy or hippopotamus, is a geometric transformation that scales figures by a fixed ratio from a specific point called the center, basically scaling things up or down. Circle inversion is a geometric transformation that maps points inside and outside a given circle in a special way. This is what it looks like if you use a grid. Vita jumping is a problem solving technique used in number theory. You start with a solution to an equation and use Vita's formulas to generate a smaller solution. And by repeating this jump, you can can reach a base case or contradiction proving the original claim. Modular arithmetic is arithmetic for integers where numbers wrap around after reaching a certain value called the modulus. So for example, a clock works in mod 12 because when the hour hand reaches 12, it wraps around back to zero. The AMGM inequality states that the arithmetic mean is greater than or equal to the geometric mean. Arithmetic mean is when you add two numbers then half it and geometric mean is when you multiply two numbers then square root it. Evan Chen earned a gold medal in the 2014 International Mathematics Olympiad and wrote a 300 page textbook called Euclidean Geometry in Mathematical Olympiads, widely used for training in mathematical competitions. The Art of Problem Solving is an education platform designed to help students develop problem solving skills. Founded in 2003 by Richard Rusk, <laughs> A former Math Olympiad competitor, Art of Problem Solving offers a range of resources designed to challenge high achieving students. The Integration Bee is a competition where big sweaty nerds get together and race to solve integration problems quickly. Yes, the room that they do it in does smell like rotten cheese and no, they don't have anything better to do. The Coffin Problems are a set of extremely challenging or unsolved problems, often in geometry or number theory. Some examples are the Collatz Conjecture, the Twin Prime Conjecture, or the Perfect Cuboid Problem. Fermat's Little Theorem states, if P is a prime number and A is an integer not divisible by p, then a to the power p minus 1 equals 1 mod p. Wilson's theorem states a positive integer p is greater than 1 if and only if p minus 1 factorial is equal to minus 1 mod p. North Korean cheating scandal. In 2010, North Korea's team was disqualified from the IMO again for allegedly supplying solutions that were exceptionally close to those in the official solutions booklet. But when they came back in 2016, one of the Megamind competitors attending the IMO in Hong Kong put two and two together and realised Hang on a minute. I'm in Hong Kong right now. I could just run to an airport and board a flight to South Korea, which is basically what he did. This led to North Korea placing much tougher surveillance on anyone leaving the country, even if it's to compete in international competitions. Layer four, burnt out undergrad. It's a matter, it's a matter. Epsilon Delta formalism. Now you're studying mathematics at university, which means everything you write will have to be done with proper mathematical rigor. I'll give you an example. Let's say you have a function called f of x, and I pick a point on that function and we'll call it a. But let's say that for whatever reason, instead of finding the value of f of a, I want to find the limit as x tends towards a of f of x. This is basically the same as finding f of a, only instead of just plugging it into our function, we're using what's around it to judge what f of a might be. And you might be thinking, well, why the hell would you do that? Because sometimes f of a might not have a value, but it does have a limit. So to find this limit, instead of writing L equals F of A, instead you would write L equals the limit as X tends to A of F of X. But at university, it's never that simple. What is a limit? Define it, define it, define it, define it, define it, define it. Yeah, yeah, define it, define it, define it, define it. Yeah, define it, define it, define it, define it. Introducing epsilon and delta. Epsilon represents how close we want f of x to be to l, and delta represents how close x needs to be to a for the difference between f of x and l to be less than epsilon. And as we bring epsilon closer and closer to zero, we approach 
approach the limit a. So we can say that a limit exists if for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta such that when the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, there is some epsilon which satisfies the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. And if you don't understand that, then I can't explain it any simpler. So you're going to have to rewind it and like watch the video back in slow motion or something. Real numbers. Picture this. Let's say I show you all the integers in a line and I ask you, how many are there? You would say infinity and you would still be correct. But did you know that there are more numbers in this real number line from just zero to one than there are integers on the whole number line? This is because even numbers that go on forever and ever like pi are real numbers. There's no such thing as an integer that goes on forever and ever. And there are an infinite number of these numbers which technically carry infinite data. And because there's like infinite infinitely many infinite amounts of data in this line and this number line only has infinite amounts of finite data, this line is bigger than this. And that concludes my very rigorous proof that there are more real numbers than there are integers. Take that, Cantor, you pillock. Analytic geometry is the study of geometry using a coordinate system, which is usually the standard graphs that you see. What's this? Oh, is it a square? No, it's a x to the power of a thousand plus y to the power of a thousand equals one. Vector spaces. A vector is literally just a list of numbers. You know like how in computer science you have arrays? It's basically the same thing, only vector A plus vector B is found by adding the adjacent numbers in each vector together, and to multiply a number by a vector, you just multiply that number by each each of its values. It's useful because if you've got a grid and you know a vector A and vector B, then adding them together will li literally just give you the vector which gets you directly there. It's useful because if you've got a grid and you know that vector A and vector B will get you where you want, then adding them together will literally give you the vector which gets you directly there. Continuous functions. In school you learn that a continuous function is a function which you can draw without taking your pen off the page. But in university, you learn that a function is uniformly continuous if for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that for all x and y, if the absolute value of x minus y is less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus f of y is less than epsilon. Math Stack Exchange. If you learn to code before the days of ChatGPT, then you've probably used Stack Overflow. Because when you're trying to write a program and you run into some problem, there's probably some other big sweaty nerd that ran into the same problem before and went on Stack Overflow to complain about it. Then an even bigger, sweatier nerd who knows how to fix it comes along and explains how to fix it. Math Stack Exchange is literally the same thing, but for maths. Basic algebraic structures. Despite the name claiming to be quote, basic, these structures are only really known by elite level math nerds. A set is just a collection of elements which can be anything from numbers to functions to shapes or whatever, and a mathematical structure is just a set which has operations that follow certain rules. Basically, we're trying to find a mathematical structure using the least amount of information possible, so when you see a plus or a star or a dot symbol, they don't always mean add or times, they just represent an abstract binary operation. A group, for example, is a type of set which satisfies these four properties properties, a ring satisfies these properties, and a field satisfies these properties. Don't question it too much because by nature it's an abstract mathematical structure and it's a lot like abstract art. It's just it just is, okay? Quaternions. You've heard of i squared equals minus one, but have you heard of i squared equals j squared equals k squared equals ijk equals minus one? If you use this structure, then you can create these 4D numbers and you can actually use this to understand 3D and 4D rotations in the same way that you can use imaginary numbers to understand rotations in 2D. Matrices. If a vector is a list of numbers, then a matrix is a grid of numbers. It works in the same way as vectors, but there are more operations you can do on these like matrix multiplication or finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Convergence tests. These are methods to determine whether an infinite series converges to a finite value or diverges. The most common convergence test is the nth term test, where if you have an infinite series of a sub n, then if the limit of a sub n as n tends to infinity is not equal to zero, then the series diverges. And if the limit does equal to zero, the test is inconclusive. There are also other tests which I could make a whole video explaining each one, but I'm not going to. Click and watch this video if you want to see more. Like if you want to see the rest of the iceberg and piss off. <laughs>